Hello world. Uh, this is about a. This video is about Danfoss ERC 101 digital temperature controller. Uh, here it is. This is what it looks like. Okay. Uh, lower left corner, you have your power button. Uh, right now, you see a blue light. That means that the power is on to the unit. I'm going to turn the power off on my power strip. So now the power is on, and there's your blue dot, power off. Okay, so when, so if you have a blue dot, that means that you have power to your display. Then uh, the lower left hand corner, you have to hold it down for five seconds, and that will bring on your controller. Okay, right now as you can see there's an E01, that's an error for your number one sensor. Um, any button, if you touch the, any button will cancel the alarm, it stops blinking. But right now I don't have a sensor hooked up to this. Sensor would be hooked up to uh, this place right here um, where it says... S1, see S1, S4, let's see if you can see that. S1, S4, S2, S5. So those, uh, you would, your three pole is your first hole. Three pole is for your uh, evaporator sensor. And your two, uh, the two pole, that's for your condenser, temperature sensor. And the third one over is a digital, and that's for uh, if you're using a laptop or a door sensor for uh, it's digital input. So, um, okay. So, and other stuff here is this is where I have my power hooked up to the controller. Um, terminals number one, two, and three are your uh, two and three are your line connections. Your line goes to uh, the hot side of your line goes to terminal number two. Your uh, neutral goes to three and your one connection point one is your output to your compressor which would is the line side which is the line Right here is the line power being uh, from the relay. The relay closes and goes to, you can see up in the upper left hand corner of this picture that you have D, D O and it has a little snowflake and the one, two, and three you can see there. And the one is the check mark, that's your line out. So terminal number one is the power to your compressor relay or the compressor itself uh, this control they say will hold uh, will work up to like two and a half horse they're saying but there's no way in heck I would ever use this controller um, <laughs> I have a unit that's a freezer that is a half horse compressor and it's burned up this controller melted the connections in five years so it's only half horse and it's drawn like eight amps so but on startup they're gonna draw a lot higher so it's advisable not to use this as run the always use this controller to control a contact or a relay um, I would never run any more than five amps through uh, one of these controllers uh, so as a as a rule so um, so, uh, there's terminal 2 and 3 you can see, L is for line, L N is for neutral on their 3, then you get your output, S1, S2, DI for digital, cabinet sensor is S1, uh, then your, it's all your stuff there. Okay, so let's get into the controller, um, the upper left button is for defrost. If you hit that, it'll go into defrost. Right now, it's programmed to not 
the defrost parameter inside the controller is not turned on so um, you do that by getting into uh, this part of the uh, wrote this down right here this is kind of how um, the controller works here's your what your buttons do you got your uh, on button is either on or it also is an ok button the upper left is a defrost button but it's also a back button and your up and down is your right buttons um, then you once it's the display is on you hit any button to acknowledge any alarms and then um, to get into the programming you hold the upper the upper and the lower button here you hold them both down together so uh, see if I can do this with one hand it's going to be I don't think I can one two three four five, six yep I did okay I was able to do it so the is the first thing that's going to show up uh, if you don't touch the display for 30 seconds it will revert uh, back to the beginning so the um, so let's see if I can do this full screen so you got up as there's your the on my little flow chart you can see on the left the for the thermostat functions alarms if I go down COP for compressor functions defrost PUD for pull down CON for condenser uh, condenser temperature uh, monitoring alarms uh, this for display ASI for assignments and SER for service information that one is just for uh, giving you run compressor run times and all that kind of stuff uh, in the SER part so when you go let's go down again okay so now we're at the top again at THE then you hit the OK button, which is the power button also, and you get into the S the second programming from THE. Now we're inside the next flow chart, and it goes down to uh, the different compressor, the temperature differential. HSE, let me open the book here. I got I printed this out. This is 52 pages of programming. Um, so let's go to the thermostat. I'm gonna start that part of the so uh, okay so if I go okay so if I go back to go back with the display you hit the upper left button which is a back button and that puts you to THE which is one row back in your programming so now you're gonna hit OK for the THE and that puts you into the next programming level over um so this is your all the stuff that's available in the the part of the programming the um is uh you can see your uh set point adjustment ratio your let me see if i differential and get this all in the book right um so you got spr for set point adjustment ratio differential is your second one down then high set point low set point and your air temperature adjust but let's see what i better touch the display or else it's going to go backwards okay so we have um okay so we have uh, so let me see if i can get this in the screen differential the differential Okay, HSC, LSC, TAD, and then SPR. So you're going up and down through your things. Okay, so I want to go into differential, and I want to hit OK, which is the power button is also your OK button. Like I said, the power button is also OK button, and the refrost button is your back button. Okay, so I set it to 5. And there's my OK for differential. So differential, the default setting for my differential was two. I don't like uh, two degree differentials. 
you know that means if you set something at 36 it's going to be off at 36 and then back on at 38 so two degree doesn't give you any length of time for air defrost so i like incorporating some air defrost in my off times so that's why i want to set my control like at 35 and have it go back on at 40 so i like a five degree differential i'll we'll hit okay on the differential only got five if you wanted to change your differential to four you can go down hit four hit okay for power button and your differential. If you want to look at your differential setting, hit the OK button. As you can see, we're at 4. Okay, so that's your differential. So OK, I want to set it at 5. So I'm setting it back up to 5. I hit OK. Alright, so differential high HSC is your high set point. That's so uh, you can set it so if somebody's messing with the buttons um, hit the high set point of 10 or 10.1 is what it's at right now so um, that's so nobody sets it in right now uh, this is going to go in an ice cream freezer so that's where I want that set at um, at 10 degrees it comes the default um, what it comes this controller uh, that says the default high set point if you look here on the page, high set point, low set point. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull this book back further, but uh, yeah, okay. So it's uh, looks like 122 degrees is supposed to be the default, and minus 31 is your low set point uh, default because there's your centigrade and Fahrenheit you can see over there in the unit, so it's be the right one because we're set to display as Fahrenheit. So um, the default uh, factory programming should be 122. That's not true. That's not what this one came with. So you got to check some of your defaults. Um, my defaults came, I wrote down D for default, were 10, and this uh, low set point was minus 20 so okay um, so uh, anyhow so we're back to E01 which I told you if you didn't touch the display it goes back to the beginning so that means now I have to touch both these buttons again hold both these buttons down to get into the programming mode okay so still at E error 01 I'm holding down both the buttons. One, two, three. Okay, I'm back into my thermostat, which is your first page, like what I said to you. Um, THE, that's your first, uh, first part of the flow chart, and then you get into the second level and then the third level type of thing. So anyway, so your first level, um, is THE, alarms, compressor, uh, defrost, pull down, uh, condenser, and display, and um, uh, display assignments and service. Okay, so we're back at the top, THE, and then you go OK, and then you go into your second part of it, like I said. So that's for doing your differential and stuff. So I want to make check my differential. Okay, we're set at five. Okay, so then you hit the OK button. And so now I want to go back one. So now I'm at my this. Okay, so I want to alarms. I'm not going to worry about COP for compressor. Okay, compressor I do want to get into. So then you hit OK, and you got CRT. For a compressor runtime, I believe that stands for. So let's get into the second um, alarms and okay, compressor. Okay, so compressor runtimes. All right, so all your hold on a second here. Okay, so, OK, 
Okay, so you have. Let's see if I can open this book up a bit more. Okay. So, um, so you have CST. Okay, CRT is minimum runtime. Um, CST is minimum stop time. Minimum off time is COT, is C for compressor, OT for off time. Um, CST for stop time. CRT for run time, compressor run time. Okay, then you want, um, then you got error run time. You got error stop time, uh, minimum cut in voltage is ULI, uh, minimum cut out voltage, um, power on delay, power factor, power on delay, POD, um, power factor, initial cut in, power on temperature. So. This thing does a lot of stuff. Anyway, so I wanted my compressor stop time, which is like a time delay. Um, so CST, I made a note here, set to five, because I want it to be um, my compressor minimum stop time. I wanted to make it, I'm making like a five minute time delay. So the default is zero, as you can see on this chart. Okay, so compressor stop time is here, you can see run time, compressor stop time, uh, okay, and you can see it's five. If I wanted to change that compressor stop delay, you go four or three or two or whatever. Okay, so five and then you hit okay. So compressor stop time, you hit okay, it's a five. Hit okay again, okay. Let me go. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, okay. So, like it says, uh, you got minimum runtime. You can read that if you want to. Um, minimum stop time. It was two. Uh, the default is two. Um, CST. In this book, it says the default is zero. I have another. Um, uh, I printed out on the iBooks a PDF, and it was a default of uh, two, I believe. Or this one. Um, yes, I, or maybe this one was just set at two. So you have to check your parameters on some of the stuff. Um, for so these are the these are the ones I recommend that you check. So, um, uh, so anyway, so minimum stop time, this parameter is a number of minutes from zero to 30. It determines the minimum number of minutes the compressor must remain idle before a temperature cut-in can take place. Um, for example, if the temperature sensor indicates the cut-in temperature has been reached, but the number of minutes in this parameter not elapse, since the compressor stopped, then the compressor will stay off, will only start once the duration given by the CST has been reached provided the temperature is still high enough thus it overrides the cut in so uh, that's you know that's what I want and I want a compressor stop time of five minutes so a rest time you know of the compressor before it comes back on so um, then you've got your maximum off time you can read that and you've got uh, error run time minimum cut in voltage <clears throat> and the D on all my notes, the D is default. I'm um, just making notes here. But anyways, um, and you got all your other stuff here, and you got your defrost. Um, that's another one we're gonna get into. Uh, actually, no, I'm not gonna get into defrost. Not in this particular video. For this is going in the ice cream dipping cabinet. 
this control. Um, so this, uh, I don't need to worry about the defrost section. Um, so that's why it's turned off on my controller. Um, okay. So you can change the defrost to turn it on. Um, I believe, uh, yeah, you change it here, the frost type. Let me see if I can get into that real quick. Okay, I'm gonna hold both these buttons down again because I'm back to the beginning. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'm back into there. Okay, go down, defrost, hit OK. Okay, DFT is the first one. If I hit OK, it's on It's on no, because I don't want, so no for no defrost. So you go up for natural defrost. That turns on, hit OK. So now if I hit OK again, now I'm on natural. <coughs> now, when I go backwards with this display, hit top button and then I go back to my easy okay you'll see all the lights come on you see the green and that's the controller resetting itself and now you hit any button so you can hit any button to the alarm that's your error zero one because I don't have any sensor hooked up to this <coughs> that's why we're always getting an E01 with a red bell for alarm now if I hit the rain button which is defrost you see the defrost light comes on now because now we have now we can initiate that would shut off the compressor and you would uh, get into a natural defrost um, defrost mode and so it has termination temperatures in here so you get your defaults as you can see on this chart and you've got defrost up here on the top um okay so your default defrost termination temperature is uh 42.8 degrees um the default was 42.8 that's correct defaults 41 on this one that i found the defrost reset temperature so some of this stuff like I said, it was off, has been programmed different. So you got to check your controllers before you put them in. That's what I'm showing you here, how to do this, how to bench test this. I'm, like I said, doing this just off a power cord. So I just, I just took a power cord, put it in a power, in a power strip and just, you know, put a cord with a couple of, with a couple of ends on it. And just, I'm just powering up my controller to double check it before the job tomorrow to program it and make it a lot easier. Or you can do this on the job, you know? Just bring your pigtail with you. Or you can just do it at the unit, you know, if you wanna uh, do it at the unit, whichever you wanna do. Anyhow, so um, the frost goes on. By turning the defrost button, defrost off. Real simple there. So let's get back into, we're at E01 so we're at the beginning again so now I have to uh, hold these two buttons down again because I don't want the defrost feature being active so one two three four five and eight okay I'm back into the, my <coughs> first level of programming alarm compressor defro defrost Okay, defrost time. Uh, what do they call that? Yeah, defrost type. Excuse me, defrost type. Uh, we either want on the defrost natural defrost, or we want no defrost. So I hit OK, and that gives me no defrost. So okay, so defrost type, and then we're on no. Okay. And 
Then I want to go back, back one. Okay, so we're into defrost. We're into that now. The first level of programming, again. Pull down, condenser, display. Let's see what's the next area I want to get into. Okay, um, the display. Okay, the display. If you want Fahrenheit or centigrade, so display. We hit again this one for. Uh, Okay, and CFU is your display unit, uh, so that's your, uh, I guess something, something units probably, CF units, uh, okay, so uh, degrees Fahrenheit, there's your F, Can I hit OK, or C, and then you would hit OK, and then you go back one display is now in centigrade as you can see okay so let's hit display okay we want to change our units excuse me oh cfu all right hit okay we're in centigrade turn to f hit okay go back one okay now we're in fahrenheit again okay so display, okay so, okay, so display, hit OK, and more CFU. Okay, so the default on this controller when I got it, because I bought it in America, United States, uh, this, this says the default is centigrade. So I'm guessing these instructions, I got them off Dan, Dan Foss West website which is in, uh, oh, I think Dan Foss is in maybe Denmark, I'm thinking. Anyways, it's Europe. So Europe, everything's going to be, default's going to be centigrade. So that's why some of this stuff is different. So um, anyways, so that's your first line. CFU is your default centigrade. Um, okay, so then you can sh display resolution. You can change it to uh, tenths of a degree resolution, or uh, one or one degree. It's right now um, probably at one because it's that's what it's doing. Display range limit, uh, display delay. You got all kinds of stuff. So display intensity. Um, that's a use another useful one default is 10. That's that's a that's full brightness If you go down to one that would be your least, you know less bright So let's get into that. Oh, we're back at the E01 again. Okay, so let me hit a button to clear the alarm Let me hit hold both these buttons down One two three four five Okay, we're into THE, which is the top of our one. Okay, uh, alarms, compressor, defrost, lung. Okay, display. Okay, hit OK. CFU. So you can either go all the way down through your your steps here, or you can actually it will go backwards. If you're closer the other way, so the DIN, um, so that's your should be like the dim, you know, like it's on ten. So that's what the default is for the brightest display. So say if you wanted your display to be very dim, okay, two I guess is the lowest it'll go. Hit OK, and then back display. I guess it doesn't change. I'm looking at it myself, and so, anyways, display looks a little dimmer, I guess. So go back, display, hit OK. Go 
and hit OK. Two, let me see. Just looking at this myself. Hit OK. OK. Huh. Doesn't look like much difference in brightness to me. So. Okay. So. Uh, anyhow. So. It's okay. We're on 10. Go back one. Back one. Display. Okay, so, okay, we're at display. Let's go to another one. I want to go into service, I think is the next one I want to look at. Yeah, which has got some cool stuff in the service part here. I got, um, let's hit OK on service. And we got UAC, which gives you your voltage. So that's your incoming line voltage feeding the controller. And we've got 123 coming in on this line. So that's pretty cool. The other day I had it when I was programming it from another outlet. Um, it was reading 120. So I got different voltages and uh, different legs on my panel. <laughs> I can tell that this circuit is on a different circuit, different side of the panel. So uh, that's pretty cool. Anyways, um, so there's your service. Um, you can see what it'll do. Uh, you got voltage. And you're going down defrost time counter, software version, hardware version, um, manufacturing date, set as default. Thought it had, um, oh, relay one counter. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I thought, that, let's, oh, shoot, we're back to E01 again. So let me hold these two buttons down again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Oh, shoot. DHE. Okay, so we go, we can go down all the way through the settings here. Or you can go back, you can go up because. We know service is on the end of the menu, so THE is the top, and then you go, it's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 windows, and then service is at the bottom of the tower, and you keep going round and round, you know, so you got <clears throat> nine parameters, so you can go whichever way you know is the closest to getting there. So anyways, if we go up one, you go into service. Um, let's hit OK on that. And then UAC, hit OK. That gives our voltage. All right, so we can go back on that. And then we go down to, let's find out, our relay counter is RL1, which is, let's look at this. Relay counter number one. So uh, let's see what it gives us. RL, there's RL1. Hit OK. F0. So that's because it's a brand new controller. It's never been in. So I'll, I'll do that when I take out the other old controller. We'll mess with that one too and put that, put that, edit that one into this video and we can see the differences. So, anyways. So this is, uh, like I said, the new controller going in. So anyways, hit OK. Back on that one. Okay, so that's about all the stuff I'm interested in. You get it now. I mean, we've been doing this for 30 minutes, so um, I kind of get what's going on. So anyhow, um go into some other pages of a few more things I just want to mention um, okay the E01 like what I was telling you there's your uh, troubleshooting okay 
King, so. Damn it. Okay. Alright, so you're Dan Foss troubleshooting. Um, so, there's your, that's that. But what I wanted to get into was um, see where it says over there? E01 or E02 is shown on display. It means E01 sensor is defective. So, replace sensor. So that's, well, that's or or the wires broke, you know, because obviously there's nothing hooked up to it. So, you know, if your wire fell off or whatever, you would also get that too. Or the wire broke. So, um, here's your sensors. This is another part I wanted to get into. This here. So, um, wiring diagram. That's what I wanted to explain to you. I'll never put these pages in this book. Okay, anyhow. Um, Alright, so there's diagram stuff here so if you want a red display um, you'd order codes there um, this is a blue display so I'll give you those numbers in a minute but anyways here's your wiring diagram as you can see one two and three like I said your line goes into two neutral goes onto three and your line, the D, you can see right there, your D01 is your little, your 01 little relay. It takes the actual power from the line. And when the relay closes, it goes to connection point number one, which goes to your compressor. You can see the little compressor there. And the other side of your compressor is obviously picking up the neutral somewhere. So anyways, so that's that. And you have here your S1, S2, your analog inputs, and your digital DI, your digital inputs. Uh, there's, see how it says here, temperature sensor for cabinet. It goes on your S1, that's a three-pole sensor. Your two-pole sensor is the one that you use for condenser. So that's how you know which one goes where. One's a three-pole sensor, and one's a two-pole sensor. Two-pole goes on S2. So that's how you can remember it. Two poles, S2. So it's also, only, that's the only way it's going to fit. So anyways, um, temperature sensor for condenser temperature control. Um, so, And it's not condenser temperature control, it's for your alarms. For the condenser, you also, where you attach your condenser sensor is on the liquid line, the outlet of the uh, outlet of the condenser, uh, not on the inlet of the condenser. Okay, so, um, so this is for, this is, okay, the control sensor must always be connected and is used for controlling the cutting and cutout of the compressor and the sensor is also used for display temperature placement of the sensor blah 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 okay um okay so anyways condenser sensor like i was saying this is this page okay here's your evaporator sensor only used for de-icing and driver has no control purpose. Okay, that's four. Okay, each. Okay, evaporator sensor. Okay, condenser sensor. Condenser outlet. Place with the sensor, place a sensor at the liquid side of the condenser. Okay. That's that. 
And oh, there's some more stuff here. There's how you wire, which sensor goes where. As you can see, S1, S2. Nothing on the digital unless you're using laptop computer hooking it up for programming. Okay, so you can read what's what there. Okay, 52 pages in this book. 52 pages I printed out. Um, ERC 101 controller reference reference manual. Um, there's Dan Foss website right there. Oh, let me give you a quick overview of the table of contents. Okay. Clips did not come with this controller. I was kind of shocked that I didn't get two new clips with it. Um, um, they did not, and I don't know what that 5.00. Oh, I think that's the firmware. I looked inside of it, but uh, definitely was more than five bucks. <laughs> so uh, I was kind of shocked. I did not get any new clips. So you gotta order clips separately. So these clips are used to secure the ERC-101. Um, so just a FYI note, if you need clips, you're gonna have to order them um, separately. Okay, there's some other information. You can stop the video, obviously. That's why I'm not spending a whole long time on this stuff. So you guys can, um, if you want to read something more, you can stop the video. And if you want any more than that, um, you can just uh, download this. It will download. You can download it into an iBooks into your iPhone, um, which is very cool. So here's uh, let me do a few more things. Controlling. Uh, so here's the actual the buttons explained. What they do. Green defrost symbol. It's lit when in defrost mode. Like I said. Okay, let's, okay to turn on the controller. Like I said, turn on and off the RC controller. Press the on or off button for five seconds, which is the lower left button. Acknowledge in alarms. Press any button to acknowledge.
<coughs> and I think I'm going to end the video there. Um, and thermostat, that's in the in the video at this point okay all right thanks for watching click like on the video if you could and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed okay so dan foss controller and we'll be turning it off hold the power button down for five seconds off there we go and that's it shut down and you like the little power dot that little dot tells you you got power to the the unit's plugged in in other words so all right thanks for watching all right uh take care have a good one bye